a lot of people have anniversary triggers, especially when it comes with traumatic loss or a death of a family member or your person. And it might have been not only just the loss itself was traumatic, but there may have been something tied to that loss that was a traumatic event. And with these anniversary triggers, they're associated with specific dates or anniversaries of the traumatic event. They can include the anniversary of a loss, a traumatic incident, or a significant life event. Recognizing anniversary triggers involves being aware of any shifts in mood, increased anxiety, or intrusive thoughts that occur around certain dates or anniversaries. And these can be super hard because this is something that I've noticed within myself, within some others that I'm working with. And when that anniversary, that date comes around and it can start manifesting a good week to two weeks maybe before this anniversary starts is upon us and you'll start noticing that you're feeling down, that you're feeling grumpy, you know, you're just feeling out of sorts and you're not really understanding why until that date arrives. And then when that date arrives, sometimes that usually clicks. And sometimes for me, June and September are two big ones for me. And it's something that I work through. And when we recognize that and we become aware of those shifts, then we can actually work to cultivate a better self-awareness of that, better mindfulness and, and be introspection or introspective. And by doing that, we're paying attention to the emotional and psychological responses in different situations and environments. One of the hints that I have, sorry, I just like hit the crap out of my mic. One of the things that you can do is keep a journal to track patterns, noting any commonalities between situations where intense emotions or distress arise. Seeking therapy or counseling can also provide guidance and support in identifying and understanding the triggers more deeply. Once you recognize your triggers, you can develop strategies to manage and cope with them effectively. This may involve implementing self-care practices, practicing grounding techniques, seeking support from loved ones or professionals, and engaging in trauma-informed therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which in short is called EMDR. And when we learn those coping mechanisms on how to deal with our triggers and to recognize them, it really impacts your life for the better because now you now have the tools to be able to have awareness of that and to be able to start looking at those situations and getting to the point to where you may be in that situation, you see it, but the emotions is sort of removed from it and it allows you to see it for what it actually is and to be able to break that different and that difficult pattern. Thank you for listening for me to today. <laughs> and I know that you're unstoppable. You are the beacon of hope and you are loved. Like this podcast, do me a favor and share among your friends and your family. Let's get this podcast to grow. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And I also have a website, You Are Loved.